Okay, so since we have videos for all of the other stitches um, on needle and thread, I thought we should probably do one for the uh, cloister stitch as well, um, or cloister stitch, depending on how you're pronouncing it. Um, Mike and is probably going to laugh at my attempt at German there. Uh, this is a tapestry style stitch that's used to cover a lot of ground with a lot of thread efficiency. So there's going to be a lot of thread on the top, but not a lot on the bottom, so that they save on thread. This is just a scrap piece of heavy linen, and this is my thread and needle. This is three strands of DMC, and I know for the rest of the project we've recommended two strands, but for the case of cloister stitch, you're going to want it a little thicker to cover some more ground. So all I'm going to do is come up through my fabric, okay, and we're going to make a line. Okay, now this is the important part. Let's see if we can get this close enough to do this here. Um, your thread will have a twist to it. Um, there's an S twist and a Z twist, depending on which way it was spun. And this one has an S twist, uh, meaning it's tilting in this direction when I look at the fibers. Okay, so this is the direction I'm gonna make my couching stitches in. So I have made my first line Please forgive me as I'm doing this through my camera so it's a little extra weird. And then I'm just going to come back down with little tiny couching stitches. The reason you need to know the twist is because these couching stitches will blend in to your thread if you follow the twist. So again, this is my S twist, which is a whoop. Again, I'm working on camera, so it's backwards. So it's a left to right. And come on, brain, you can do it. There we go. Watching ourselves stitch on film is difficult. We're learning a thing here. Okay, so that's your one line. And you kind of want to don't tension just as much as I did there. And then you're going to come up right next to it. For your second line. And again, you come back down and you want to do your stagger your, your couching stitches a little bit. Okay. This is just to secure the line you just made. This is called a self couching stitch. And you stagger them because you don't want them all in the same spot looking weird. I'm doing a somewhat terrible job of that right now is again, trying to figure out my hands on camera is an interesting experience. I'm trying to wonder how people do this on real YouTube videos. Okay. So, and you would just keep going like that to fill your space. So I'll do one more line just so you can kind of see what three lines together would look like. This stitch is fairly fast. Okay, I mean, where are you? Why am I oh, like way down there? Seriously, if you think this is easy, you should try watching yourself on film while you stitch. It's an adventure. Okay, and then up. And then you're going to travel back down with your couching stitches. And you don't get Chaucer today, but you might get Shakespeare. I just leapt onto my desk to see what I was doing. So that's a little less even than I would normally like. Um, what you really want to do is keep those lines very close together so that you're filling your area. But... So you can fill your entire area with this, and then on the backs, you can see you're using less thread here. And then when you're done, you just... Yeah, that was simple. <laughs> Slide your thread through to secure it like you normally would. And... 
cloister stitch. Okay, so that is one of your options for your fill stitches. Um, it's as you can see, it's pretty quick. So uh, good option if you decide that you need a break from all the split stitch.